Chaos is not a pit, it is a ladder. With a fallen king and a once clear hierarchy now gone, windows of opportunity had opened. Everyone in the kingdom now faced decisions. How and where would they proceed in all of this? The springboard to all that followed was when a new house was created, Hodor, named after the big guy himself. The house founders were no other than Hodor and Romulus. Hodor were currently seated in Winterfell. Together with Romulus they set out on a quest to unify the north under Hodor's banners. They had many followers, people who had worked together with them in Golds, a house that no longer existed. In addition to that they recruited many others and Hodor quickly became a strong house. House Sands, who had been more or less untouched by the attack on Golds, remained in their Dornish area. House Light, House Honor and House Laban all faced losses but regathered their forces and their houses remained solid after the fall of Golds. As if the attack on King's Landing and Golds was not surprising enough, yet another change would shock the kingdom. Just two days after Song of Ice and Fire had claimed King's Landing as his, he left it. Abandoned and left without defense, Karalhu, leader of House Light, took the opportunity and strolled into the gardens of King's Landing, into the empty hall and claimed the throne. Once again the lands of Westeros had a new king. We may never unravel the whole truth of why Song of Ice and Fire left King's Landing that day. Maybe he felt he didn't want to be king. Maybe he didn't believe he could protect it. It could even be that he simply wanted to prove that King's Landing could be sieged successfully. Either way, after he left King's Landing, he claimed High Garden instead. There, in the Reach, Song of Ice and Fire established his house Ice. Meanwhile, the Kals, who had roamed the lands after Gold's fall, had went underground. At least for the moment. Together with DoD, they planned their next move. The Kals had started to bond with Hodor and his house. A good relationship started to grow. The Kals and DoD came to the conclusion that House Hodor was the right choice for them. After discussions with Hodor himself, they became a part of his council and his house. DoD left House Watch. Many followed him to Hodor, the rest with its former leader Hagemeister, to join the ranks of Ice. When the Kals joined Hodor, they went by new names. Miki by the name Beric Dondarian, and Gaza by Thoros of Myr. Only a few knew who these two really were, while most people from time to time would ask, where did the Kals go? Even within Hodor's house this was discussed now and then. With time, the Kals didn't upheld their secret identities and people learned the truth. Once again the kingdom entered a time of peace, with one exception, the war in the north. House Hodor had now begun their quest to unify the north under its banners, and the only house that tried to stop them were a house named Dark. But House Dark were no match for Hodor, who had grown tremendously in members and strength. Very soon they had expanded and became two houses under the same name to make room for all their members. Soon Hodor held the majority of the north and they turned their eyes elsewhere. The Kals and DoD didn't mind more warfare and Hodor and Romulus didn't need much convincing to agree. They had not forgotten what Song of Ice and Fire together with others had done to Golds. Hodor marched south, 
towards the Reach and House Ice. A war that lasted for weeks began. House Honor, Light and Laban were later involved as well. Hodor made progress south and claimed more and more land as their own. The final blow against Ice came when DoD reached out to his former leader Hagemeister and persuaded him and his people to leave Ice and join him at Hodor. So when Ice suddenly lost about 15 members and some valuable seats, they stood defeated. Now that Hodor was spread across a big part of the kingdom, with a lot of members and seats, they were without question the strongest house. However, the Kals Crusade, now combined with Hodor's march south, had awakened something. Something that would always be remembered as the biggest event in this kingdom. A force that had not been foreseen, nor ever witnessed before. Ladies and gents of Westeros, that was the second chapter of our story. If you enjoyed it, please let us know by giving this video a like. If you want to check out any of our other videos, have a look at the suggestions. Also, don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on any future content. I'm DoD and thanks for watching.